the kind of fulcrum, the knowledge fulcrum, I, I always think of it as that, uh, which is driving ideas, actions, implementation, monitoring and evaluation uh, for the government. So a very key role that uh, Amitabh plays as the CEO of the Niti Aayog. Uh, he's uh, from the Indian Administrative Service, uh, from the Kerala Kader. Uh, uh, God's own country is his country. Uh, it's his campaign. And of course, he's been the driver behind the make in India and the incredible India, the startup India, all the major initiatives uh, has uh, his hand uh, on them. And he's had a distinguished career in the IAS, of course, and now uh, he is heading uh, and running Niti Aayog. And it's always a pleasure to have him with us. So please welcome uh, Amitabh Kant. Amitabh has to run to another meeting, so we're very lucky to have him. But the floor is yours, Amitabh. Uh, thanks, Shekhar, for that uh, introduction. I'm delighted to be here. Um, actually, you just told me yesterday to join, so I'm delighted because uh, I think uh, when I was a district collector in Kerala in Calicut, uh, now known as Kodi Kod, uh, one of the major problems was that uh, you never knew on uh, any of the socioeconomic indices whether your district is going up or going down because there was no real-time data. Uh, you know, the data that was available was about five to six years old. And even now, uh, on a whole range of economic, uh, socioeconomic indicators across uh, health, education, etc., uh, we are all working on data which is actually uh, almost five to six years old. So, my belief in data lies from the fact that when I was secretary DIPP, uh, I was given the task of uh, improving India on ease of doing business. And uh, I had to, uh, you know, while we were working on improving ourselves on a range of indicators which the World Bank had laid down, I realized that it's not important that we need to improve on the World Bank's ranking on ease of doing business, but we need to make our states easy and simple because uh, India is a very large country. It's bigger than 24 countries of Europe. And all the business is actually done and all the investment is carried out on states. So we laid down about 100 outcome parameters and we started ranking states on them. And uh, we were collecting data on real-time basis then. And uh, we were putting this out. We created our dashboard and we put it out in public domain so that every chief secretary should know whether he's going up or going down. And uh, on these parameters, we created a huge amount of competition amongst the states. And... Uh, the first year we did this, Gujarat came number one. The next year, Andhra beat Gujarat on this. And the third year we did this, a new state like Telangana beat Andhra and Gujarat both. But the good thing was that uh, the states of Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh, they moved up radically and they came third and fourth. And my belief is that if you are able to collect data on a real-time basis. If you are able to constantly put it out on public domain, if you are able to rank states on the basis of data and have integrity of data and put it in, in public domain, you will make good governance as good politics. And you will actually name and shame. I still recall that the Chief Secretary of Chhattisgarh came to me and he said, we are coming sixth uh, in the ranking. And then I opened my portal and I checked up. By the time he had left Chhattisgarh and by the time he had reached my office, he had moved from the sixth to the ninth position because the other states had done so much of work to move up. And this was a constant minute to minute, minute to minute battle which was taking place between states to move up on the ranking in the states. So my belief is 
that it's very important to collect data, it's very important to do it on a real-time basis, and it's very important to create competition, rank, put it in public domain, and use data to name and shame. That's the only way India will improve radically in social indicators. And therefore, from ease of doing business, the first thing I did when I came to Niti Ayo was that I started doing the same thing on education. I started ranking states on data, real-time data on education, on health. And subsequently, I did this in water where real-time data was very, very difficult because there are seven or eight different departments which deal with water. But we put out ranking of states on management of water. And I now deal with, a. if you look at the map of India, you will see that several regions of India do well. Southern part of India does well on socioeconomic indicators. The northern part does okay. The western part does well. But there are a whole range of districts which do very badly on all these socioeconomic indicators, whether it be education, health, nutrition. And therefore, we started a program on the backward districts of India. We don't call them the backward districts. We call them the aspirational districts of India. And we picked up 49 indicators. And on these 49 indicators, we are ranking these districts on just data, on pure data. And this is again a battle for the districts by the districts every month. Minute to minute, minute to minute they are competing, but we formally announce the ranking of the districts, not on how they have performed historically, because historically if you do it, Kerala will keep coming number one on education and health, but we do it on delta, on the incremental change during the course of the month. And therefore, we are capturing incremental change as it is taking place live on ground on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. And we put this out every month. And the district which has done well, we give them untied fund. To the district which has come first, so we have five parameters of education, health, nutrition, digitization, and agriculture. The district which has come first we give them three crores of untied fund to use it to the collector to change his district. And overall, the district which has come first, we give 10 crores and we give five crores to the district which has come second so that they can use it as untied fund. All on the basis of real-time data which is verified by third parties. And the third parties are ID Insight and Tata Trust people on ground which are cross-checking this data. And now we built up very strong algorithms. So if anybody plays around with data, he's immediately told that his data is going haywire and uh, wide variety. Uh, there's wide variation in the data. So my belief is that actually there is no governance without data. There can be no transformation without data. And there can be no on-ground changes without creating competition based on real-time data. But behind this, creating a dashboard, capturing real-time data, and putting it in public domain is a very, very tough job. It's not an easy job. And to build the sense of discipline in government, of constantly feeding data, training government staff to do this, monitoring, creating incremental ranking based on incremental data and change and capturing change is a very, very tough job. Especially with government officers in the field who are not used to doing this. And therefore, we've had to do massive amount of training of the government staff at the district level and huge amount of work. But if you look at government, the government has actually pushed digitization in a range of areas. If you look at the tax department, 99.6% of direct tax is on, paid online. 96% of it is settled within a period of three months online. 
if you look at the government management itself the public finance management system everything is digital every payment that i make is digital till the last mile it's all tracked i can't really release any money without the pfms system which is totally digital if you look at the new ayushman bharat scheme which is covering 500 million indians which is more than the population of usa europe and mexico put together it's cashless paperless portable it's all digital if you look at the goods and services tax which is one tax across indian economy it's like putting one tax across europe which will never happen but india has done this it's all cashless paperless it's all digital and therefore across all these areas india is throwing up vast amount of data huge amount of data and actually india's as is often said has become data rich before it has become rich and we've got massive amounts of data now this enables you to do massive amount of machine learning you it's possible to use huge amount of artificial intelligence to drive the right policy transformations the challenge here is that quite often we use ai models which are based on western economies and where the data is very thin unlike india where the massive amounts of data is available and therefore ai models of the western world may not be replicable to india and therefore it's important that we put out data in public domain that to our mind is the key for academicians and researchers to work on and for young startups to use data to because the challenges of india are unique these are not the challenges which the western world has silicon valley may be the most innovative place in the world but it has no challenges so they keep doing innovations like driverless cars which are not irrelevant innovations whereas all the challenges are in india the challenge of improving learning outcomes the challenge of improving on maternal mortality infant mortality the challenge of providing seed and fertilizer to our farmers based on real time basis depending on weather and soil conditions all this are challenges of india and if indian academicians researchers young startups are able to find solutions to the problems of india we will be finding solutions not for the 1.3 billion people of india but for the 7.5 billion people of the world who will move from poverty to middle class and therefore data must be made accessible to academicians and researchers and to startups for them to be able to disrupt and therefore india has enormous quantities of data but this is all siloed data this is all siloed data and india has generated massive amount of data but we have archaic systems of collecting administrative data by government and non machine readable formats for collecting data and this lack of realization of the ultimate goal for collecting data leads to capture of data points which are not amenable to useful analysis there is also a potential for increased i to my mind there's a relative lack of capacity in government for use of data in decision making government officials are quite often engaged in routine tasks they need to go through huge amount of training and this is i am all this i am speaking from my experience that they need to go through massive amount of training on uh, to understand basic statistical techniques and tests and they need to uh, have the requisite skills and mindset required both for collection of data and to use it effectively and this alone would help us to improve to organically improve data collection as better trained policy makers and you know we will be able to 
do far better work because we are collecting data but not putting it to use and collecting data in a manner which we are not able to put it to use. So, uh, to my mind, this is really the key. Uh, there has to also to be a transition to increased reliance on data uh, the currently implemented systems for collection of data are overtly reliant on uh, survey mechanisms the challenge is rooted in our inability to depend wholly on administrative data or lack of confidence to do this and many of people i have interacted with in government they are not used to uh, the new scientific ways of capturing data we've tried to for instance on uh, in our nutrition program actually one of the key things that has been done is that if you go to anganwadis you will see massive amount of registers huge amount of registers being maintained so the Anganwadi workers and ASHA workers on nutrition are actually doing more work on just maintaining registers rather than providing nutritious food to children and huge amount of data. Now, we have now provided them iPads and we have provided them mobile phones and a huge amount of training has been given to them and therefore we need to ensure that this data is constantly analyzed, constantly uh, we put them through a huge amount of analysis so that we are able to track every single child and every single pregnant mother to break away from the vicious cycle of malnutrition. And therefore, all this would require us to do several things. One is, to my mind, a creation of huge amount of training of government staff for to shift away from, towards capturing data from mobiles and iPads and equipping field workers, the frontline workers with mobiles and iPads. And this would require a change of mindset. Secondly is building out creation of standards for data collection. And thirdly, after analysis of government data to be able to do research and publish this data in public domain. Fourthly, I think in government we need establishment of system for sharing of data. Because data is available but data, nobody wants to share data. You know, it's firstly it's siloed and nobody, even department to department, we are not willing to share. So, without sharing data, you will not be able to reach the right conclusion and therefore sharing of data is the key and therefore creation of a national open data and analytics platform uh, which is able to stitch together existing government data sets is to, to our mind really cr critical and this is what we are trying to work on to share government data that is relevant that is updated regularly, where different data points are readable and access is easy for researchers and for startups. This is really the key. And uh, there has to be a creation of awareness and appreciation of potential data utility. And there has to be, because most government officers are just not aware of the criticality of government data. and. Uh, this data would be very, all the data which government is collecting uh, needs to be analyzed and put out and also uh, we, government needs to create an open data culture in governance. We are strong believers that wherever feasible collected data should be made available to the general public in an anonymized format for peer review. This will help in identifying whether new sources of data are self-consistent and will further help government agencies uh, to arrive at the right policy decisions. 
And towards this, our belief is that every government and every ministry in government needs to have a chief data officer to achieve these goals. And there has to be a targeted training of government personnel at all levels to utilize data for decision making. I am personally a great believer that data is really the key to all informed policy making. Without data, you will never be able to arrive at the right policy decisions. And therefore, uh, I strongly feel that we need to drive this. My own experience demonstrates that without proper data, without uh, collecting real-time data from the field, without creating competition, without subjecting it to good analysis, and without putting it in public domain, it's very difficult to bring in change, especially on slow-moving indicators of education, health, and nutrition. And therefore, if you want rapid change and the challenge of rapid growth of India and becoming a five trillion dollar economy by 2024, it'll be very difficult to achieve it without India growing at rapid rates and benefiting from the compound power of growth, compounding power of growth. But that is not possible if we are not able to improve radically on social indicators. And social indicators will be very difficult to improve without tracking them on real time data. And what I've said is really the uh, our perspective in Niti that we should pursue across government agencies. So with these few words, I'll conclude. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you, Amitabh. Those were uh, spirited words and coming from you, I'm sure that we are going to see action we, as we already are in a number of these areas. And so I think it's, it's, and many of the things that you referred to, the siloing of data, the fact that we generate data but don't have the capacity to use the data well, uh, the fact that uh, our data sometimes are really not in a format in which we can use them, these have all been reflected in the morning panels. So I'm just very glad that we had you come and talk about this because it actually gives a clear indication that the government is seized of the matter and that Niti in particular is going to lead on some of these issues. I don't know how much time you have. You have to run. Yeah, you had to be somewhere at one. So let's just thank uh, 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 Amitabh uh, again. And uh, we're very grateful that you could come and give us this view from the heart of government. So with that, uh, thank you very much again, Amitabh. So I think that's a nice high note to end on. Um, we'll hold Amitabh uh, to these statements and uh, we'll probably invite him for another session where we will replay some of this and say to him, so where are we now? But I think it's wonderful that he actually managed without any prompting from me, certainly, uh, to really resonate fully with many of the issues that were raised in the two morning sessions. Um, this brings us really to the close of this wonderful morning. Um, uh, it's really uh, uh, Manny who has to speak first and I have to speak last, but we'll just reverse the order and let Manny thank all of you. I want to thank all of you myself, but also thank 3IE for this opportunity to partner with them. I hope it's a, a, a partnership with a reasonable payoff to 3IE. So that means that Delhi Evidence Week next year might be held here as well. Um, we'll certainly, and since the board is here, I'm sure I'm making a pitch to them as well. Uh, but we'd be delighted to do so. I think this is a very rich discussion. I did want to say that in my own panel, I felt that there were things all over the place. We had a very large canvas and we let everybody paint on that canvas. But I think that's precisely what we need to do. We need to get a sense of the many issues that are interconnected, that are live, that have, haven't been discussed. And I hope that coming out of this uh, morning, uh, we'll look at the video, maybe 3N, 3IE and we will pull together a set of more thoughtful and aggregated uh, issues that we can put in buckets that make sense, logical sense and policy sense. And then I hope we can share that uh, on their website, our website, as a way of driving this process forward. When I began in the morning, I did say that our own thinking at NCR is to use this event 
as a way of crystallizing a few people who are really interested and knowledgeable about this to bring them together in a more intimate setting and actually spend some time talking amongst ourselves but also use our convening power to bring people in like Amitabh who can listen and that's in a very kind of non-threatening, secure, uh, non-confrontational, we're not selling anything but really an exchange of ideas and it was great to have both the legal profession through Rahul Mathan and of course the leadership from uh, Raghupati or CN Raghupati from Infosys in this. So I think we are well connected and I hope to see some of you at uh, these kinds of discussions that we hope to have in the future. I'll hand over to Manny. Um. No, uh, thanks, uh, uh, Shekhar. Uh, let me just do, do two things. One is to uh, share with you just, uh, if you bear with me, just a minute of my own personal takeaways from this incredibly rich day. And then secondly, of course, to thank you. And uh, I, I can't answer all your questions about, but I can guarantee this, if there is an evidence, a Delhi evidence week, it will be in Delhi. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, we, we need to talk about uh, what, uh, uh, about the mechanics uh, of, of that. Uh, just a couple of uh, reflections on uh, on the day. I think that, you know, from, from my point of view, um, the uh, uh, theory of change, actually, that uh, Amitabh Kant laid out is exactly one that, that we share. If you have good data, it leads to better analysis, which leads to better governance and ultimately better outcomes for, for poor people. And that's the theory of change, I think, that we all all, all have in our head. And, and my quest, question I ask myself is, uh, where am I after hearing everything today? And uh, I think that, uh, to borrow an analogy that others ha have made, that if you think of this great outcome as the, the fruit, okay, and that whole theory of change is the fruit, uh, uh, the fruit is, is ripe and appetizing, but it's not quite low-hanging. <laughs> Um, and uh, I think what we heard from, from Amitabh is that there's a huge opportunity out there here in India, that uh, you have a huge amount of data uh, available uh, more than ever before. You always had that. It's just that uh, perhaps now it's in a state that is uh, a little easier to harvest, especially with new technology. Uh, and uh, What's even more heartening to me is hearing him say that they're willing to share it, which is a huge step. I was at the World Bank for many, many years, and there were not many governments who were even willing to say, I'm willing to share it, never mind doing it itself. Uh, I think that the, 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 the one challenge that, that he laid out and that others echoed throughout the panel is that uh, the ability to do that is uh, uh, is what makes this fruit not 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 so uh, low low hanging. So there's a question of uh, first incentive. There's a, a willingness to pay at the highest level. We heard that from the CEO of Niti Aayog, and I'm sure the cabinet shares that. I think that if you go lower down in the food chain, I, I don't know about India. I'm only guessing, but certainly in the countries that I've been dealing with, uh, the kinds of silos he, he talked about and the kinds of protectiveness of the power of data is something that needs to be as, uh, addressed through incentives uh, uh, of what those uh, 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 controllers of data have. Question of, of ability, I'm reminded of, you know, uh, there's a huge amount of data out there and, and uh, there is this line that says water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. And, and uh, that's something I think that still needs to be addressed. Uh, the other is, uh, my other takeaway from the earlier panels is be careful what you wish for. Uh, that uh, it's, there's a great need to protect data sources that we all talked about, uh, how to protect privacy, uh, the ethical dimensions, uh, the permission. We all almost feel violated when we heard that Facebook was sharing our data without our knowledge. Um, we, we make... Uh, 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 yesterday, we heard uh, Jeff Hammer saying that uh, in, the, in his pr project uh, in which he was trying to uh, uh, visualize uh, different families in India, that he was told by lawyers that it's not enough to make them sign. These are 
both poor and rich families, because when you ask people who need to sign anything, they think you're taking away their land. You actually have to film them. And uh, how do you do that when you're going to big data, facial recognition, and using that without that word? So there's, that's, that, that's one big issue. The other thing that we, we talked about is also important to protect the user of that data, the, the analyzer, because of the need uh, there's a very large variance in the variability. Uh, there's a question of who's going to curate. Uh, you talked about the accountability uh, mechanisms here in India. Amitab Khan talked about a chief data officer for every ministry. It's an interesting debate to have of, um, uh, of where to, uh, to have that. So bottom line, I think, is that, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the fruit is, is ripe and appetizing. It's not so low-hanging. But I think we're all committed because we all know what happens to fruit ripe fruit if you don't pick it. So I look forward to uh, a really uh, great partnership. I think that this has been a wonderful start, Shekhar, and I think that my colleagues and I at 3IE uh, share the excitement for the future about how we have a shared vision for uh, and mission uh, in how we make sure that uh, the information base is translated into good policies that will make a difference in the lives of people everywhere. So thank you very much. So thanks everybody again for being here and please join us for lunch outside. Uh, I'm sure uh, it may have stopped raining, but uh, I think there are multiple stands now for lunch. So welcome all of you to lunch and thank you all for coming. <laughs>